Hello everyone, I hope that you are all doing well. So I'm walking here in the countryside uh, next to the park of the castle. My wife is at the swimming pool, but I, I don't go to the swimming pool because I don't want the chlor. You know, the chlor is very bad for the health. Since I have vitiligo, okay, I think it would be okay because uh, my vitiligo is not so bad as compared to other people. I'm, I'm rather lucky. Look, this guy just installed a, he has a private uh, swimming pool. It's an old bassin, you know, it's kind of funny in his garden. But anyway, I don't go there. I don't go to the swimming pool. Um, I go to the lake, there's some lake, you can swim in the lake, but to, today the weather is not so good, the lake is cold, so my wife, she doesn't want the cold water, she wants the hot water, so anyway, I'm here walking. And um, you see, in China, this year, my kid is three years old, a little bit older, three and a half, and he goes to the school. First of all, you know, in France, you don't have to go to school until six years old. If I were in France, I wouldn't send him to school. Depending on my situation, I would probably just stay with him in this kind of environment. And I would say, hey, stay with your father. I'm going to teach you. Uh, you are still very small. You don't need to go to school at three years old. Just go there when you are six. Now in China, it's a different story. Um, I could stay with my kid, but uh, what could I? What can I do with him? What can I do with him in China? I cannot go outside because the weather, most of the time, most of the year, the weather is too cold or it's too hot, and uh, it's unbearable when you are outside. And then you have the mosquito, and then there is no place. There is no place to walk. You have cars, you have roads, you have no. You have some park, but that's quite limited. You have to drive to the park, because you don't live next to the park. Or you have to drive to the subway station and then take the subway until the park. And then, oh, it's unbearable. Or you have to take a taxi, cost money. Um, <coughs> so in the end, <coughs> it's a bit difficult. Uh, or you can go to the shopping mall. So, and then you have no free place, nothing free. Everything, huh? you want to play with your kid, you have to pay this bill. So in the end, it's better when you are in China to put your kid at school, even if he's three years old. However, um, what I found out is that when you have a child in China, it's very, very hard. You have to pay a lot of money. Why it's very difficult? Well, as a foreigner, in many places, you cannot even put your kid. If your kid is not a Chinese national, he cannot go to any school. Only He can only go to the international school a private school and they will be very expensive um, and as a Chinese national it's also very hard to send your kid to school there is no place there is no place so you need to have an apartment you need to have the huko which is the registration your kid has the registration from this place from this district because you own you have a home here you have an apartment here you are the owner of this apartment, therefore your kid can go to this district. And I found out huh, in all the schools in China, you have 40, 50 kids per class, 40 children per class. The teachers uh, are not really qualified. Uh, their knowledge is limited. They don't know how to deal with children. They don't know how to teach well. Uh, the class, uh, you have too many students per class. Mm. It's very expensive, it's overpriced, it's much more expensive than here. This year, last year I was paying for a private kindergarten, 3,000 yuan for one month. 3,000 yuan for one month, can you imagine when I'm working, teaching at the university in China, I'm making 7,000 yuan a month. So I have to pay 3,000 yuan for my kid. And then, uh, of course, I have to pay for my clothes and for my food, huh? what is left. Um, so it's terrible. And then I wondered, why? Why? You have the one-child policy. It means there's less and less Chinese people. The population is going, is, is going down. You have less and less Chinese people. And they are less and less children. And then you don't have enough schools. It doesn't make sense. 
you have less and less kids and less and less, less and less children and then you don't have enough school and, and the schools are packed and you don't have enough teachers, you don't have enough qualified teachers. So then you wonder about it and you think, why? Why? It doesn't make sense. Uh, then the only logical explanation that I can find, huh? people in China, uh, I remember back in 2007, you had 40% of Chinese farmers who lived in the countryside and all these guys, maybe even more, all these people who lived in the countryside, they, move, they are moving to the bigger city. So they are moving to the second tier city or to the third tier city. And then the government is not able to follow. The government, the local authorities, are not able to, to deal with it. So they are totally overwhelmed. They are not able to build the, the school on time. They are not able to, to make, to, to have the facilities for the kids. They are not able to offer quality teachers. They are overwhelmed by the situation. They are not able to deal with it. Uh, that's something. Uh, that's something crazy. Huh? That's something crazy. Huh? Uh, really, huh? honestly, huh? Um, I think uh, in, when you are in China, you think, okay, there is only the Communist Party. There is a continuity, never change. There is a planification in the long run. Everything should go smoothly. But in fact, it's a big mess. And then you say, why? Why? Because at the local level, or maybe even at the government level, the authorities are not able to deal with the things. They are just dealing day by day, day by day. That's what it means. It's dealing day by day. Here I'm telling you about the kids, the education in China. And you can see many children, they, it's very difficult for them to find a school, to even find a school. And the level of the school will be, will be low. Huh? It's, 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 not a high, uh, it's not a high education, it's not a high level. Um, and it's overpriced. And the teachers are not good. And you have 50 kids per class. So next year I'm quite lucky. I was very, very lucky in fact. Because of the network, I was able to find uh, the school for my kid, and um, and then uh, I'm able to uh, to have him go to this school. And he will be uh, he will be uh, uh, studying there, and it's really cheap. It's really cheap. It's, it's uh, how much? One thousand yuan for one month. So in one year, it's maybe something like ten, twelve thousand yuan very cheap and the education is great they have good teachers at least for this level very good teachers they are very responsible it seems to me i will show you uh, if i can when i fetch my kids they have all kind of facilities the kids can play mm, i think it's very good education but that's the top school the top school of the city where i am we have you have all the officials over there so all the kids of the officials they go there okay bon à bientôt les amis hein. By the way, I can show you a little bit. You have the countryside over there. On this side, you see this that you can see over there? Ça, c'est un château à eau. It's the place where you used to have the water that comes inside, and they will keep the water for the agriculture before. This one over there, as far away, is the same. All these housing that are over there is like a very, very cheap housing that are provided for poor people. Maybe this kind of housing, um, maybe you could buy it at 50,000 euro, 40,000 euro. Very, very small housing, with all, very little garden, or almost no garden. And here you have the castle with the park. I'm going to show you from the sky. Okay, à bientôt les amis. <laughs>